Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov Chess Channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we see opening principles, middle game strategies and middle game plannings and the end game strategies. So today we'll do some opening principles again and uh, we'll talk about this very important rook connection in an opening. So the rook connection is basically one of the three stages in a chess opening. So here uh, let's remind us what are these three stages. First of course you should... Um, uh, develop your pieces, then you should castle, and then move your queen from the first rank and try to connect your rooks. So, here let's see now white's position. Uh, white developed three uh, three pieces so far. Uh, we we don't have uh, a developed bishop here. The bishop was, is still c1. Uh, and here uh, the queen has removed the uh, from the first rank, but uh, you see white has this problem uh, because he didn't uh, connect his rooks so this is now a position from a very very popular game it's a uh, game played by Bukud, Bukuti Gurken it's against Mikhail Tal Mikhail Tal here with the black pieces uh, he and he says here that uh, white has this developing problems uh, with this uh, with this lack of the uh, lack of the connection of the rooks and here Tal played uh, knight on g4 and uh, okay, the white sh should have maybe taken here the uh, knight on g4, uh, and then of course bishop takes on g4 would be the continuation. But here uh, white played a very very strange move h3, and uh, probably w um, white was annoyed here by this knight on the fourth rank. And here Mikhail Tal, of course one of the best tacticians in chess history, finds this very very nice move. Knight takes on f2. And that's uh, possible because uh, white didn't uh, finish his development, he didn't connect his rook and with his h3 move he weakened his king side. And here uh, after king takes on f2, queen on, uh, queen on h4 was played. So here king on f1 has to be played because uh, the rook was hanging and you see how important is it is to have this rook connected. So that's why here bishop on d4 and now the, uh, we have immediate checkmate threat here on, on f2. So that's why uh, knight on d1 was played and now very strong move queen takes on h3 if it uh, captured the, the queen then you get bishop takes on h3 checkmate so uh, really really nice attack here by the legendary Mikhail Tal uh, bishop on f3 was played now queen on h2 we have knight on a3 e3 uh, cutting out uh, this very important diagonal for for the white's queen uh, f5 was played uh, you see tau plays simply on the attack he wants to open some files and diagonals of course knight on c4 was played f takes e4 uh, bishop takes on e4 if you try something like uh, knight on d6 then you get e takes f3 if you try to, uh, uh, to grab the rook then you get uh, queen on uh, uh, queen on h1 uh, here after king on f2 you get checkmated here on on g2 so very very nice tactical motifs here by by Mikhail Tal bishop on e4 was played here bishop on a6 we have now another pin uh, on on the king bishop on f3 rook on e5 uh, again trying doubling up the rooks you see uh, now uh, Mikhail Tal uh, has this very nice rook connection on the e file uh, rook on a3, rook on e8, and you see uh, now these uh, rooks are perfectly working uh, together because uh, it's best to put them on on the same files, on the same rank. Sometimes, if if you have the possibility, of course, you should maybe uh, put your rooks on on the second or the seventh rank. Uh, uh, if you're playing, um, if you're playing as white, of course. So here uh, you see, black has a perfect, perfect uh, coordination of the pieces. All of the pieces are are on good squares. The bishops are really aiming on white's king. The rooks are really nice connected. Uh, basically, what we have to do is improve the position of this knight on knight on c7. Bishop on d2 was played knight. Knight takes on d5 again with the spinning ideas. Bishop takes on d5. We have uh, we have rook takes on d5. You cannot uh, capture the rook, of course, you d uh, because you get checkmate on uh, g1. So that's why uh, king on mm, king on e2 was played. Now we have bishop takes on e3. Rook takes on e3. Uh, 
bishop takes on c4 and here in this position uh, white resigned because uh, if you try something like queen takes on c4 then you get queen on g2 uh, king on d1 uh, ha would have be played and then you get here a checkmate on on d2 so you see perfect attack by the legendary magician from riga here he uh, got use uh, of, of his rook connection his opponent didn't get this uh, rook connection in in an early stage of the game so he got punished with this uh, h3 pawn which m uh, weakened uh, his king after casting so let's see now uh, another example and it's a very very nice game played by uh, also the legendary and former world champion uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Kramnik here with the white pieces against Peter Leko and here Peter Leko uh, probably thought okay after knight takes on d4 and c takes d4 queen takes uh, d2 uh, I'm going into simplifications but here um, here uh, Vladimir Kramnik plays a very strong move he plays king takes on d2 and he gets now um, his development finished because he has now connected the rooks and uh, um, black's problem is that he didn't do that and uh, you see now we can really occupy this very important c file with with his rooks and if uh, if black tries to compete on the c file here uh, with, with this rook uh, then we can of course trade off the rooks and then bring another rook uh, on the c file so that that uh, that's the importance of this rook connection because uh, if you don't have the rook connection your opponent will probably um, take over uh, the c file take over some files take over your second rank your seventh rank and that could be really a problem in an end game so here uh, knight on f4 was played by uh, by leko rook on c1 we have um, h5 we have rook on g1 and now you see uh, how important this that uh, you should uh, you occupy here really this semi open and open files so now uh, this rooks by uh, vladimir Ka kramnik are really um, playing very well here here bishop on c6 was played peter leko is trying uh, to uh, to at least cut out this very important c file we have g takes h4 knight takes h4 and now uh, b4 uh, a6 now we have a4 here kramnik even uh, gives up a pawn because he wants to really occupy this very important uh, seventh rank if you uh, if you manage to do that you will probably win the game uh, here um, that's why king on d d8 was played but it's still a problem because again again um, black didn't connect his rooks and uh, you see uh, we have really a lack of coordination by the pieces the, uh, the knight is on a very very annoying square on h5 so here king uh, rook on g uh, g5 was played with an attack on f7 bishop on e8 now we have b5 uh, knight on f4 we have b, uh, b6 with the preparation to put the rook now finally on the seventh rank so here um knight on d3 was played king on d3 uh, rook on c8 rook takes on c8 king takes on c8 and now this other rook as you can see comes finally uh, uh, with the check bishop on c6 was played knight on knight on uh, f7 rook takes on h5 h4 uh, knight on d6 with the check we have king on d8 and now rook on g1 and uh, okay this knight is a uh, very nice place here um, because it cannot be attacked by any piece anymore uh, in black's camp uh, this knight will stay uh, on this very important square till the end of the game but let's see now the continuation rook on h2 was played king on e2 we have uh, rook on a3 rook takes on g7 rook takes on a4 we have now f4 if you take uh, if you take out the pawn we have possibilities to get this very important pawn breakthrough so that's uh, that's why uh, uh, black tried rook on a2 king on f3 we have rook on a3 uh, king on g4 uh, we rook on d3 and now f5 the idea is of course uh, to get uh, um, after f takes 
uh, e takes f f5 then to push uh, e6 uh, then e7 and then of course e8 with the promotion so rook uh, on d4 was played king on uh, g5 we have uh, e takes f5 king on uh, king on f6 very very s nice attack by uh, vladimir kramnik he gets now uh, his king on sixth rank uh, and the king is also uh, is not is also not vulnerable to to his opponent's attacks rook on g4 was played rook on c7 rook on uh, h4 and now knight on f7 and in this position black resigned because we have also possibilities to play something like rook on c6 then b7 and similar ideas we can also push this pawn so very very nice attack by the legendary vlad and uh, i really lo loved uh, in in this move after uh, king takes on d2 uh, here let's see uh, this uh, knight on d4 uh, c takes d4 uh, queen takes on d2 and now king takes on d2 not to take with the knight uh, here very important move king king takes on d2 connect its rooks and uh, finishes development so i hope you realize this idea it's really important uh, to get this three stages in an opening work sometimes of course uh, there are lines in which you don't do that but if possible just play this healthy chess as i always love to say try to connect them try to secure a king first and uh, you see okay here we have the king on d2 but it's really not an endangered king because we don't have any more the queens on the board so this was a perfect perfect uh, positional play by vladimir Kram okay i hope you also that uh, i hope also that you enjoyed the video meanwhile you can watch my other basics in chess videos from the series and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzle series if you want to see the best chess tactics that can happen in a chess game and you can also subscribe to my channel thank you for watching guys and chess is the best of course